Today's meeting of the Transportation Licensing Commission, if you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, Notice is hereby given that if you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Mr. Fields has circulated draft meeting minutes from our, our meeting uh, last month. Has the commission had an opportunity to review the draft minutes? We have. Is there a motion regarding approval? Motion to approve. Second? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> motion passes. Uh, we have a public hearing today. Uh, we, uh, we have our annual hearing for the consideration of taxi cab certificates of public convenience and necessity. Um, and um, Mr. Fields tells me that there have been no applications for new or additional taxi cabs that have, that have been filed for consideration. That is correct. Uh, as of 12 15 of December 13, 2022, there were no applications for additional taxi cabs, new companies, or additional changes to existing companies. You, uh, the ordinance requires that you have a public hearing. It does not require you obviously can't take action on some of the, there's there's nothing to take action on so uh, as you've done before you would open it and you would close it and we've met the because anything that's brought up hadn't been properly posted so you right. wouldn't be able to take action all right so we we are officially and formally opening the public hearing uh, for our annual hearing uh, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on the on the matter Go ahead and close the public hearing then and mr fields uh, since there's no action to take do we need to do anything else there's nothing else to do we'll say uh we may want to have a conversation about uh, fees and so forth at a later date but we you and i spoke about that as far as a potential issue today but when there were no other applications then we we may want to discuss that later all right could i ask a question just point of data how, how many taxis are there right now Maybe the only one that the only number I didn't look at today, three hundred. <laughs> it's a rough number. It's 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 in between three seventy five and four hundred today. Four out four hundred noon. As opposed to you know, twenty seven, twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen, fourteen hundred. Fourteen. Fourteen hundred. Mm -hmm. And that's the number of permits out there, or is that the active or actual cabs that are that's the, the number that can be out there can be, yeah. it, so we it, don't know it well it depends <laughs> if those cab drivers are functioning they were they were licensed and can if they choose to be on the street i'd like to take this moment to make an observation of the changes that are occurring in the public transportation um, years past there was very competitive it was very competitive request during this public hearing for additional permits for taxi cabs and, uh, and and many of them were contested um, apparently now I think now two years has been that we have not had any applications for additional permits so it's clearly a shift in at least the perceived need of public transportation in Davidson County correct it has, there has been a great deal of change there's been a, a very large influx of, uh, of uh, not not just uber and lyft but also the issue of uber black which is a, a higher level of uber they are licensed mm -hmm. uh today you have 282 opvh vehicles uh, uh it, and there are 34 on the agenda today so uh it's a uh, it, it has changed Many, most of the opvh applications have been basically sedan service uh, and of course we say sedan but sedan and suvs and that sort of thing I think you're right. Thanks, Mr. Fields. The next item on the agenda is under our consent agenda, under record. 
Towing and Recovery to 673 Blair Road in Smyrna. Mr. Fields. would like to change his address in order to change his address and move he would have to uh, do this he is, an, he is a, a general record uh, and is not required to uh, he, he's he's not doing non he, he has no non-consent nor does he have uh, emergency so it's just a, a formality he can't dig the he can't move and he can't officially move and, and use his permit until you approve it. Is there any issue that he's moving out of Davidson County no, sir. He uh, the only <coughs> only towing that he would be doing would be uh, uh, private uh, towing, which means the owner of the vehicle would call him, and then they would ask him to tow it to wherever they want to tow to. So he could. Uh, he, he's actually being a good citizen by moving out of the county. Uh, he can legally come to the county five times, come and go in the county five times a month without a permit. But by doing this, he'd have full rights to operate in the county. But there's no issues about where they would tow the vehicles because they're all being requested by the <coughs> owner of the vehicle. Do you recommend approval? Yes. I have a quick question, just for record. Um, you said you can come in and out of the county five times without mm -hmm. um, actually having the permit. How do we track that? Uh, it's it's one of the more challenging, to be honest with you. I mean, some over the years we have some that were easy because you could find them. In fact, we've got a couple right now that we're working on legally. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it, that's one of the more challenging parts of the job is to be able to do that because when the when the commit when the Metro Council and in uh, uh let's see what would that have been in 1998 when they passed that uh, it, the idea was that if you're just coming in occasionally so they determined it'd be five times so that's a council issue but it is challenging but we do have more staff and that's certainly on our radar trying to figure out how do we do that i'd make a, move, a motion for approval of ray towing's uh, change of address Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also uh, have a renewal ap application for E and E towing and recovery. Mr. Fields. Uh, N.E. towing has been a wrecker in the past. He is an out of county wrecker. He passed the uh, renewal <coughs> deadline where we could do it without your authority, but uh, his application is order and uh, we recommend approval. Make a motion for approval of E and E towing and recoveries renewal application. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We also have an application for Nash Towing Inc. Nash Towing Inc. is a is a new general record company. Again, they're they are uh, uh, doing the same kind of towing the other two companies we've just talked about, and we recommend approval. And he is present. If you'd like to ask any questions. <coughs> Is there anything we should ask him, Mr. Fields? I, I think as far as I, as far as I know, it's in order. <laughs> All right. Make a motion to approve Nash Towing's uh, application as a new company, right? Yes. Is there a, a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We also have several uh, new company applications for other passenger vehicles for hire. Uh, Mr. Fields, um, this is under the consent agenda, so I presume these are largely in order. Uh, all but one. We, I'd like to remove uh, Wooden Wheels LLC. Uh, to uh, we have just a, a, a driver issue, and that's what I had handed to you just before the meeting. But uh, all life transportation, Amin <coughs> uh, Limo, Anna and Ava Limo, Aras Limo, Black Car Limo, Black Horse Limo LLC, Burton Transportation Nashville, Canaan Transportation LLC, Classy Transportation LLC, <coughs> ESV Seven Up. Transportation, G and J Limo LLC, GAT Transportation, Haron Limo, Ibra Ibrahimi uh, Transportation, JoJo's Limo, K, K and J Clean White Clean Wipes Music City LLC, Level One Transportation LLC, Luxury Limousine Service LLC, Marcelina Transportation LLC, Mayvan uh, Black Cars, now been. Limo On Point LLC, Paul E. Myers LLC doing business as Gold Plucks uh, Ride, Rama Limo LLC, Rasul Limo, St. Mary Limo of Nashville, Time Lapse Limo LLC, Two Flowers Limo, VIP Limo LLC, YTA Limo Service LLC, Z4 Limo Limousine Service, and Zen Luxury Transportation are, uh, are in order and, and recommend approval. Just for record. 
that is clean whip. Clay, did I, what did I say? <laughs> Whips. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. If I could ask, as long as we're talking about numbers, how many of these things are there? Just Sorry. Two eighty-two. Yeah, but there are two hundred eighty-two prior to this consideration. And this would add. I think there are thirty-four. Thirty. <clears throat> Thirty-three. Uh, there'd be thirty-four if wooden wheels is approved. Okay. And is that licensed companies or vehicles? Those are companies. Companies. Do we? Have, Sorry to keep asking, but do we have any idea how many vehicles? Oh, we certainly know how many. I don't. I, I, it, we, we physically just ran that report and reported it two weeks ago, and I did failed to bring that report. But okay, it, general it's a, number. I'm just it, well, it's in the range of uh, of three seventy five, I believe. Was it's about like the taxi cabs. They, in okay. fact, there's actually a few more uh, that OPVH than there are taxi cabs right now. I think. Okay. So we, mo most we'll get that report to you after the meeting. I apologize for that. I actually meant to put it in my folder to bring it. Most of these companies are operating one vehicle. Most of these, uh, I think all of these companies, I, I could would have to double check it, but most of them are one person, and many of them are Uber Black. In order to operate Uber Black, an Uber car or a Lyft car, just a general, does not require any local uh, authority. If it's Uber Black, they're required to, uh, by Uber, to uh, to be licensed by the city. So uh, a, a, a vast majority of the companies are folks that are Uber Black drivers. I don't want to, I, I know we have a short agenda today and I certainly don't want to prolong this meeting, but there's one observation I have. When we were looking at, when we approved permits for taxi cab drivers and taxi cabs, the taxi cab drivers went through a course for introducing them to Nashville, how to treat people who they were picking up at the airport, and, and proficiency in the English language, I think, was part mm -hmm. of it as well. There's nothing we're doing for these limousine service drivers, is actually, there? Actually, we did, we did change the rule. You actually changed your rules a couple of years ago mm -hmm. that requires any driver, uh, and I think maybe the booting folks may not have to, but any, any of your drivers are required to attend the, uh, <coughs> and it's an online course that the Convention Visitors Corporation puts on, so they all do have to see the same uh, video. It's a series of videos uh, where they're actually quizzed at the end of each one. To introduce them, introduce them to Nashville and how to promote uh, Curtis, Curtis treatment of Curtis their passengers. Being ambassadors and so forth, yeah. yes, sir. Thanks for clearing that up for me, Mr. Fields. No problem. <laughs> and Wooden Wheels LLC is not in compliance with this time? No, it's, it will, if, if we, I've just got an issue I want to make sure you're aware of prior to. Uh, okay. Consider. Of all the ones you just named, do you recommend approval of them? Yes. All right. I would make a motion to approve the applications of the... Well, do we want to remove, review Wooden's first? Well, I was going to... No, let's consent. Uh, I, it's just, I, I think if the motion, just from a parliamentary standpoint, since there's a motion in the second, you could deal with that, and then I'll explain what the Wooden Wheel issue is. All right, my motion is that we approve the applications of the OPV vehicles that were previously named by Mr. Fields and specifically excluding Wooden Wheels LLC. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, now we'll take up the consideration of Wooden Wheels LLC. Uh, in, uh, in making his application, uh, the uh, owner is Brian Eugene Wood. Mr. Wood, are you present? Uh, and uh, we just got his background this morning, so we ha we that's why we we are kind of pushed into this situation. <coughs> if you review his background, he is qualified to be a driver today. However, the, your, his background is in front of him. He does have a couple of issues that are they're beyond the seven-year limit that you look at. Uh, but there are four uh, four felonies that are there back several years ago. Uh, again, beyond the seven-year limit. But uh, I wanted to make sure we called your attention to that. And this is the packet we just received. Yes, today. that's the packet that I gave to you just before the meeting. What are the felonies that are most concerning to you, Mr. Fields? Oh, I'm not saying that they're necessarily concerning <coughs> to me. Uh, they're beyond the seven-year limit that uh, is required. This is his seven. I think uh, this is Mr. Wood's second time to come. He came uh, earlier, and we were advised him he'd have to wait until after last September to apply. He just had some drug charges, uh, and uh, it, again... 
there was a time where if they, you had more than two felonies in a 10 year period, you were disqualified. That, that rule was changed by the Metro Council uh, five or six, seven years ago. So it's only a seven year period. But again, uh, with four uh, in that same period, I wanted to make sure you were aware of it. Uh, but from the standpoint, I, I don't see any other reason that would keep him from being a driver. He certainly qualifies, and he's passed that, the limit as established by the Metro Council. Mr. Wooden, I would have a question up front. Uh, yes, the sir. drug paraphernalia count that you listed in your application, that uh -huh. was probably a misdemeanor, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was a felony. It was, uh, a felony? I believe it was uh, Grow Operation uh, Lights. Okay, so you, where you listed it as drug paraphernalia, you're saying that you think it may have been in, in the propagation of marijuana? Yeah, uh, yes. All right. And then there were three counts of felony drug possession. Were they in one, one indictment or were they separate indictments? Or, or uh, it was all the same. Uh, most of that, my grandfather, I took care of his medicine. He had hydrocodone and lots of other medicine. And because of the other charges, they went ahead and charged me with it. I never fought it. Um, you know, I, I made some bad decisions, and I've paid the price, and I definitely won't be going that route again, I assure y'all. I haven't had a chance to review the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation's uh, report on you. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me kind of generally uh, the background of this. Um, what is it multiple different cases or are you saying that it's one case all wrapped up together with oh. multiple, hold on, with multiple convictions therein? It was one case, uh, and they, it was, you know, a, a grow operation, uh, then the, my grandfather's medicine, and then they, you know, the lights and stuff they charged me is the paraphernalia. I, so, I mean, it's, it's all one case. What year? Uh, it was 2015. Okay. September 2015. And I'm just kind of guessing right now from the looks of this, were you operating a, mar a marijuana manufacturer, growing marijuana somewhere? Yes. And the police came in, they did a search warrant, and they found the marijuana, the lights, and mm -hmm. then the hydrocodone that belonged to your grandfather. Right. And they charged you with everything. Yes. What county? Uh, Davidson County. Did you plead guilty or did you go to trial? Uh, I plead guilty. I just I went ahead and got it over with them. I, mean, I, I was in the wrong. and. What kind of sentence did you receive? Uh, I got, it was four days in jail and seven or five years probation. All right. And did you have any probation violations during the five years <clears throat> of your probation? No. Did you fail any drug tests during the five no. years of probation? Mm -mm. Excuse no. me? Okay. What was the quantity of marijuana that they seized? Uh, it was a couple ounces, and then there was plants that they, you know, got, and I... That's kind of what I'm asking. It's, uh, yeah. I, it's a couple of ounces of dried, prepared marijuana. Yes. How many plants? Uh, it was, I think, 80. An indoor hydroponic type yes. thing? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, completed your probation what year? Uh, completed it in uh, 2020. It was a five-year probation. So it was September uh, 2015 to, I think, September 20, or November of 2020. Were you by any chance on what was what's called judicial diversion, or was it just straight probation? Uh, it was just probation. Okay. So you have these convictions, and you've completed probation, and you hope everything's behind you? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There may be other questions from other commissioners. Okay. Oh. Why do you want to um, operate a limousine service? Uh, it's uh, it's good money, and I mean it's the opportunity for me to make a living. Okay. What was your source of making a living during your probation? Uh, I was driving a tractor trailer for the local 46 here, and I had there was a company out of Nashville here. What the home office is in St. Louis, but it was Heritage Trade Show Company. And I drove for them from 20, it was before I was arrested, uh, March of 2015. And I did that. I even still, I'm, I'm still working for them as now through the local 46. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Any, any other questions? Thank you. Well, well, one comment is that 
being a criminal defense lawyer and having many clients who have entered guilty pleas to felonies, I'm really pleased that this commission is one of the ones that um, I frequently, well, what I'm trying to say is I frequently see people with felony convictions who come up and are trying to get legitimate jobs and this commission has approved them. Um, and that's just an observation from my own perspective. Because it is hard for people with felony convictions to get employment out there. I make a motion to approve Mr. Wooden's application for an OPV vehicle. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We've also been asked to review the uh, OPVH address change for Royal Limo to uh, 3025 Recon Court, Murfreesboro, 37217. Uh, as always, for the commission, for this company to be able to uh, legally operate with your uh, certificate, they have to report any change to their address. This is a simple report uh, and change. In order for them to do it, to make a change to the certificate, you have to approve it. We recommend approval. I'll move that we approve the address change for, uh, for a limo. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Has there ever been any consideration of letting the uh, administration make some of these decisions that seem pretty perfunctory? When, <clears throat> at which time we can actually put together uh, some legislative packages when we're not doing some of the other things, though that's actually one of the recommendations we would make to uh, just allow simple address changes uh, and things like that to not have to come to the commission as it is today. Instead of saying uh, the TLC, it says the TLC or the MTLC, uh, and it doesn't add director. In some cases, it says TLC director. Some cases, it's TLC. In this case, it's the commission. If that change was made, then you could simply come in and tell us that there had been a change of address for uh, whatever entity. We would give you a report rather than ask you to take action. I look forward to that day when you're not as busy. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, the consent agenda um, that we've been implementing the, these last few meet meetings has certainly streamlined mm -hmm. um, the process. Um, the next item on the agenda is under uh, other passenger vehicle for hire uh, for special purpose vehicles. Um, we've been asked to review uh, Center Stage Transportation LLC DBA Music City Pink Express uh, application as well as 615 Transportation. Mr. Fields. 615 Transportation's uh, owner is not present today. She is out of. Oh, oh you are? Oh, uh, is, is out of the country and is not available today. Obviously, uh, Center Stage Transportation is. Yeah. Um, uh, this, just as a little bit of a background, they're special purpose vehicles are basically defined in the ordinance by saying what they're not. A other pass, a, uh, it's under 674-025-D3, says uh, special purpose passenger vehicle for hire is limited to a passenger vehicle for hire other than a livery vehicle, a shuttle, a, trans a taxi cab, a TNC vehicle, or a horse-drawn carriage. Uh, it goes on and says fares determined by either a predetermined rate uh, schedule based on proposed designation or, or a time usage basis, not meter or mileage. It also says that uh, there has to be a prearranged, has to be prearranged by written contract third party, uh, by, by, by contract or a third party. And then finally, it, uh, within limits specified in the application or those approved by the MTLC director, uh, in issuing a certificate of public convenience and necessity. So the great, we, we don't have any special purpose vehicles for hire that I'm aware of on the street. If we do, uh, the, we've not had the applications anyway. Uh, so in order to, for me to give you a fair <coughs> evaluation, I'm having, I'm challenged by saying what it is. Uh, you can look at those, you've certainly got the applications in front of you and they look very much like entertainment transportation vehicles. In fact, they were entertainment transportation vehicles prior to the 677 adoption by the Metro Council, as well as your rules from last year. So I've, I've asked legal a question that I think makes sense at this point. Uh, 
before we move, I've asked her, I've asked uh, Ms. Gastonis to uh, share with, uh, share her opinion on, on direction the commission may need to take. So I think the question with these two applications, um, is somewhat of a factual one that goes into not just whether they meet the definition of special purpose passenger vehicle for hire, but whether they also meet the definition of entertainment transportation vehicle. And the definition of ent entertainment transportation vehicle um, includes um, a provision um, that the passengers hire the motor vehicle not only as a means of transportation, but also for some entertainment or social purpose. Whereas with a special purpose, passenger vehicle for hire. They are being hired for transportation. So the question, the factual question, I think becomes whether these particular vehicles are going to be hired just for transportation or whether they are going to be hired for some entertainment and social purpose in addition to the getting the passenger from point A to point B. And how would we monitor that? I mean, given the, the reality, given that I, I, this looks familiar, very familiar, and what I know it was previously used for, to put some people in it and say, we're going to take them down to Centennial, we're just going to go through broad, very slow. What, how would that be out of the definition <clears throat> from what it was previously used for? I mean, I think you could maybe compare, this is just speculation on my part, but you could maybe s compare prices. Like, you know, um, I think that the ET vehicles probably charge a little more than the pure transportation from point A to point B um, type vehicles. So if there's some kind of premium above the, what the cost of mere transportation would be, um, you might ask what they're paying for. Well, to me, and, I, and I'm, um, being a little bit of a fortune teller here, just being on the board for a few years, this seems like a very slippery slope and a, and a loophole that if we open it, it's going to be a bunch of people jumping through this because as a business owner myself, I know some profit is better than no profit. And if the only loophole that I needed to do was slash my, my prices to be able to operate, I think what would be most helpful and most clear would probably be a council legislative change by ordinance in which they actually changed the definition of special purpose passenger vehicle for hire to not just exclude limos, taxis, et cetera, but to also exclude ETs. Um, but obviously that, that is something that you could recommend to the council, but only the council itself can enact a change to the ordinance. So how does this differ from a special purpose vehicle to an entertainment vehicle? It's, it's the purpose for which it is hired. So if the purpose for which it is hired is purely transportation, then it falls within the special purpose passenger vehicle for hire. Well, there's, and there's one other, there's some other criterion for special purpose passenger vehicle for hire that it would have to meet as well. Y'all may remember discussing um, with a, a gentleman at a recent meeting whether his vehicle was classic or vintage, because if it's more than 15 years old, then it has to fall into one of those two categories. So it either has to be newer than that or, or classic or vintage. Um, so, and there are some other criteria as well that, that it must meet. But the, I think the relevant one for the purpose of um, uh, these two applications is whether they are going to use them for purely transportation purposes or whether they are going to use them um, as a, not, not just a means of transportation, but also for some entertainment or social purpose. You know, is it a party bus or is it just a bus? Mr. Fields, is there um, a traditional example of a special purpose other passenger vehicle for hire? Not that I'm aware of. The only one that I think at some point would have fit that for certain would have been the duck tours. However, when the duck tours were operating in Nashville, there was not a 6.74 <coughs> for them to be classified in. And plus, they were actually in the water 
So it's, you know, our authority is limited once they cross that bank line. So I can't give you an example because we don't have an example. And that's the great challenge. When these came in and we, you know, we got done to doing the reviews and we can talk a lot about it till the applications are here. But once the applications are here, we're looking at the vehicles and we're, you know, we're looking, we're going through, you know, they have to have this, that, that, and the other, you know, it has to have air conditioning. It has to have seat belts. It has to have, you know, it doesn't talk about plastic at all. When we did the full review, it, it talks about glass. So the question becomes the, the vehicle, uh, the vehicles themselves may not qualify on the front end uh, just because, you know, for instance, it says the certificate holder shall be responsible for ensuring that the mechanical inspection includes but is not limited to the following, and it runs through a litany. And, you know, it's everything from license plate lights to horn, but air conditioning, tires, muffler, condition of the body, fenders, so, so forth. And then it gets down to windshield, then rear window, and other glass, doors, and speedometer and such. So it's just, it's one of those things when we really get down to, to, to bring it to the commission, we wanted to make sure that we laid the picture out for you and we showed you what we've got. Uh, I, I think what to, to the, the lay language I would use, it's all about operations. You know, we have people that operate buses that, uh, that are more than 15 passengers and they can do that, uh, that uh, uh, they just do transportation or they're doing shuttling. And they're more than, we've got some now that if uh, they're going from point A to point B and they're doing certain kind of tours, like a shopping tour, or, uh, or you could be doing any kind of it. You could do, be doing an architectural tour. But if all they're doing is taking from point A, we're going to the museum, you get out. You go from point B, you go to the next museum and you get out. You go to C, you go to the museum and get out. The entertainment is on the exterior of the bus and not a part of the inherent operations of the bus versus a party bus for, I mean, the, the, the entertainment is the bus. And so their primary function is, tra is entertainment with some transportation because clearly they are transporting. So it's a real, ch it, it, this became a very challenge. It started out was not necessarily a challenge until we really, until it's time for the full mm -hmm. reviews and we start comparing it to the law, which is what we do with applications. And that's where we were, that's where we are today. I have, I have concerns that uh, without a different definition of OPV, of, of special purpose vehicle, I'm challenged to say I recommend approval because I can't. What, what makes these special purpose vehicles as a subcategory of the other passenger vehicles for hire? What, what designates them that subcategory? I mean, the, I'm not, I never want to speak over Metro Legal, but the truth, there, there is, it's, it says what it's not. It doesn't say what it is. It's not a limousine. It's not a taxi cab. It's not a shuttle. It's not a horse-drawn carriage. It, it is something other than that, which is why I'm, well. I mean, I think maybe it was intended to include really weird stretch limos or something like that, but um, I, it, it does seem to be sort of a catch-all category that is, as Billy says, more defined by what it is not than what it is. So the concern is the overlapping between the <clears throat> special purpose OPVHs and entertainment transportation. Correct. Now, I noticed for six, what is it, 615 transportation. She's not present today. Okay. There's the name, Bisigliol. That, is that Pizzitola? Pizzitola. Pizzitola. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Mallory Pizzitola. Pizzitola is the applicant okay. for uh, 615. Is this the same or related to the people who were in front of us not too long ago on disciplinary action for their entertainment transportation vehicle? Yes, sir. In what way? Uh, Ms. Pizzitola's company uh, was charged through... No, I mean, oh. is Mallory Pizzitola I related I to the owner daughter. of... The daughter, okay. So are we looking at three entertainment transportation vehicles now applying to become special purpose the, OPVHs? The vehicles in these applications were originally part of the party, the National Party Barge's application to be ETs. We, we, we looked at them and we, we knew it, but we went back just to make sure there was no question. And we pulled the party barge application, the original application from the party barge and then compared them to the vehicles. We've compared photographs, then we compared registrations. Registra the only difference in the registrations is current ownership. Uh, the ownership is different now than it was when it, they, were party, they were being applied for by party barge. 
So we're looking at three of the buses or so, or three of the vehicles that we parked. Three of the modified vehicles, yes. That are now coming in for another application. Actually, actually six, if you take the two together. One of yeah. them will not qualify because it's too old, so it would have to go through a waiver process. But five of them would be vehicles that were previously part of an application to uh, uh, be entertainment transportation vehicles. So you're concerned about entertainment transportation vehicles sliding over to special purpose vehicles is, is real. It's not just something speculative that we're talking about. It's actually happening in these applications here. This is what I mentioned that I'm also afraid of, yeah. Well, I think that as a commissioner, I know the, the, the definition of special purpose vehicle is defined by what it's not, but I think we as a commission can interpret our rules too to say it, given that we have a more specific rule governing ETVs, um, that that, that, uh, that the, and these vehicles uh, certainly uh, from the applications, you know, appear to be ETVs, not special purpose vehicles, that I think we could interpret our rules to say, yeah, these are not special purpose vehicles. Um, that we recognize them as well. Well, when they were ETVs and other than some paint, Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it, it, I, I th I think if I paint the, an army tank red, it's still an army tank. The, the, the critical part, 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 I think, part of what the commission does, the critical part is to make sure we properly categorize vehicles. <clears throat> the one where it's the greatest is under OPVH because there are separate sections. You know, you can look at ETs, there are two sections. You can look at records, there are three sections. Taxi cabs are taxi cabs. Low-speed vehicles are low-speed. But in those two or three different ordinances, there is dis not necessarily discretion, but there's a need for the commission to make sure that things are cl properly classified. Because uh, we know, we issue tickets. <coughs> if you go down on Broadway right now and you put a, you put a top light on, your ta on a vehicle, and we're going to give you a ticket for violation of 6.72 of the Metropolitan Code of Law, saying you're acting like a taxi cab. If you, uh, if you go down on Broadway and you're a private car and you put a sign up on the side and you say for hire and you don't have a proper permit from, this, from, from you, we're going to say you're in violation of 6.74. It's an OPVH violation. And, and again, it may, be, you know, as the public would watch this, it may seem we're down in the weeds, but the truth of the matter is I think that is what you do. That's the primary function is to provide public safety and make sure that whatever's on the street is meeting what the Metropolitan Code of Law requires as well as what the state of Tennessee and federal law. So that's, I just want to make sure, you know, I'm not saying do it or not do it at the moment. What I'm saying is I want to make sure you have you have the tools and you've had the full discussion of, and knowledge of what we're doing and how we should do it. I just want to express from my concern from being in 12, 13 hour meeting to, you know, kind of control uh, what had gotten out of out of hand in this vehicle category is to not undo what we've already done by um, kind of opening a loophole that is going to be a floodgate of everybody that we limited their vehicles that were in this same category for them to put some paint on it and say, hey, we're just going to, we don't charge as much and we're, we're just going to do A, B, and C. And, and you know, now we're in a, you know, we're, we're sticking our thumb on a dam that's about to break. Um, if, if I may, Commissioner, um, uh, so um, the question is not just the reason the question is not just does it meet the definition of special purpose vehicle for hire, does it meet the definition of ET, is because it is prohibited to operate an ET without, a, without an ET type of certificate of um, public convenience and necessity, which these companies would not have. So if they, say, got a permit to operate as a special purpose vehicle for hire and then acted as an ET by engaging in that um, social or entertainment purpose on the vehicle itself as it's transporting, um, they would be in violation of the Metro Code. Um, I will also say um, that, that Billy's quite right, that there are um, a list of inspection um, checkoffs, I guess, for um, special purpose passenger vehicles for hire that are kind of ambiguously 
applicable to these types of vehicles because they are they do include things like having air conditioning having windshields you know they're looking at the inspection of the glass and you know the, these vehicles kind of fall outside of those criteria in some ways so there's that that gives you an, a layer of ambiguity here and then finally the chair mentioned that this commission has the authority to adopt regulations and that is true you would have an authority to rock regulations to either 677, the entertainment transportation section of the um, uh, Metro um, Code, or um, Chapter 674, the other passenger vehicle for hire section of the Metro Code, or chapter. Um, and um, you can adopt any regulation that it kind of expands on what council did, but you cannot contradict anything that that is in, actually codified in what council adopted. So to make a regulation, do we make a motion and see if it passes uh, here at the commission or, or what's the situation? Or what's um, your recommendation? Um, a, a rulemaking would require advance notice of such in a public hearing. So it seems to me that perhaps we're a little premature, <clears throat> excuse me, to think about um, acting on these requests today because we might want to consider, I mean, thinking about entertainment transportation and how it got ahead of <laughs> regulation and rules and one thing and another. Um, maybe we shouldn't act today on these applications if we're going to consider perhaps some regulatory action that would give us a little something else to, to look at. Well, one of the things that gave me pause, mm -hmm. and I think what really started pressing the idea was thinking about next steps and not not next steps but next actions uh, <coughs> because i did have another company call and say hey you know i'm thinking about that's an et come says yeah i'm thinking about downsizing mm -hmm. and uh I, i'm thinking i want to bring in another vehicle uh can you tell me anything about special purpose vehicles and i said well <laughs> and i told him basically what i've told you today and there's no more applications there, there, there are no other applications except these two uh, and we've, we've gone through the records and we've looked. There are no other special purpose applications that are in our files that we are aware of out of the 282. Yeah. And that's what, I mean, I'm not opposed to companies being in business at all. I don't think this commission is. I just want to make sure that we're in a, we're in a place where we're, we're doing what we need to do. kind of the um, the slippery slope that is overly apparent here and the first is, is to chairman Hernandez's point earlier in the canon construction in terms of ruling law statutes regulations the specific trumps the general clearly we have a specific rule here which is very um, very narrow in terms of its definition of what um, an entertainment transportation vehicle is and or rather not narrow rather specific in what that is and so you know to chairman or to commissioner Carr's uh point earlier it's in in chairman hernandez's point it's defined by what it is not and so that comment is one the specific rule should certainly trump then secondly i'm interested to hear with nashville party barge slapped on the side of this obviously party barge vehicle that once was how is it going to now be different than an entertainment transportation vehicle? And because this rule clearly says, you know, what it's hired for, but also for some entertainment or social purpose. So are we saying that this vehicle is just going to get on the road and literally be a, a, a shuttle, but not a shuttle to, from one place to the next? It might play music. It might not. It might have the same enclosure requirements as we had before. I'm, I'm just quite confused as to how this is going to be different um, and so but I would like to hear from the people making the applications at least why it's going to be different and to hear some type of you know proof on that point before um, you know we kind of move forward with whatever new regulation that we would like to have I'd like to hear from the owners as well this is your meeting Hi guys, how are you? Hello. I'm Devin. Wait, is oh. there any more discussion sorry. before? Uh, I'm no, sorry. that's fine. If you give your full name. Devin Henry. Okay, so just like a little bit of a backstory on me so you kind of understand where I'm coming from. I'm born and raised in 
LA, then I moved to Las Vegas for about eight years, went to college out there. So I'm kind of familiar with the entertainment industry a little bit. Um, I actually own a business. I own a gym out in Las Vegas with my mom um, called Vibe 28. We've been open for about two years. I have been to Nashville for um, bachelorettes many times. Um, and I actually met my partner in life and business who would be driving one of the vehicles, would be one of my drivers. And um, he was working under, in the past, with Nashville Party Barge. So when these vehicles went out for sale, I was going back and forth from Vegas to Nashville, being in a long term or a long distance relationship. And um, I thought it was just a perfect opportunity to kind of bring something different to this community. You know, we are all very familiar with the Woohoo party that goes up and down Nashville. I've been on them and I love them. And I think that that's a great aspect to this. But I also think that there's just so much more that is missing. And I think that one of those would be kind of curating your own kind of agenda. So say if I create relationships with different venues, different hotels, different restaurants, and I give a list of like four, five in one category, 10, and then our um, riders can kind of pick and choose what route they want to take. So I don't really want to focus so much on the party aspect of it. I mean, I think that that's a great, something that's worked and it is working and it's great, but I just think that there's so much more that can be going on and seen in Nashville. you're still going to be providing some form of entertainment and not just transport? I don't want to um, include entertainment as far as, you know, getting drunk and partying on the bus. I want to focus more on getting off, maybe exploring a destination that they choose. You know, I don't think that an itinerary is so much focused on a six-year-old versus a 13-year-old. Maybe someone wants to see something a little bit different, and that's where we have differences, is you can kind of pick your itinerary, whether you want to go see more murals, maybe you want to go see some hotels, maybe you want to go stop at, you know, go p past the Parthenon. There's so many different avenues that don't necessarily meet, you know. But your company would sell a bachelorette party with certain stops. Yeah, certain stops that would be curated, but they don't necessarily, in my opinion, have to be all, you know, alcohol-related, party-related. Well, I, I mean, just in, in my opinion and understanding, you're still falling, falling under the entertainment vehicle category and not just, uh, we're, we're, we're taking you to Union Station and dropping you off, and when you guys are done you seeing Union Station, you come back. Uh, if, if someone calls you and says, I have a bachelorette party and I see you go to all these places and I, and I want to put my bachelorette party on there and you're playing music and entertaining them in between the stops, mm -hmm. in my opinion, that's what an, ET, an entertainment vehicle does. Okay. I guess, because um, I did read the Cornets pack and I guess I just... I'm confused with the ones that are out just strictly partying and not getting off versus ones that are like getting off and stopping and looking at different sites. So then what would that classify under? Well, there's sightseeing vehicles. <clears throat> um, yeah. And then there's the um, non-sightseeing that are the entertainment vehicles that have even higher restrictions on right. enclosures and whatnot. But they're still governed under the... No, I understand. I'm just saying for rules. right. I'm just saying for this specific situation of my vision of kind of what I wanted to do, that would just be something a little bit different than just partying up and down Nashville. I think you would be falling under the entertainment vehicles slash sightseeing. Okay. And I think maybe legal can can give you a very specific definition of what you're asking. Yeah, so with regard to the, um, the route that it takes, the ET definition is flexible. It can either be a fixed route um, or it can be um, uh, not a fixed route. Um, and then, you know, we have two different kinds of ETs as you all are talking about. We have um, regular party bus type ETs and then we have seated sightseeing vehicles, which are allowed a little bit of more leeway because they are not 
allowed to have people um, standing during the ride or um, consuming alcohol during the ride. Um, but if someone is kind of like giving a tour while the bus is in motion, that's still a form of entertainment, I think is how we've interpreted that. So um, it's still, um, that's why the seated sightseeing vehicles still come within the overall ET umbrella. Yeah, the, your, your definition that she was quoting, and I'll read it if I could into the record, where the vehicle consistently operates on one or more fixed routes, where passengers are required to remain seated at all times while the vehicle is in operation, and where alcohol is never permitted or served on the vehicle, the vehicle may be classified as a seated sightseeing or charter tour vehicle. So, and, and as, as you were describing it, it sounded very much like a, a seated sightseeing tour where they would go and look at, I think you said, you, there were several places they might go look at. Yeah. So, would... there, so the, again, the entertainment, it's, it's, a, it's a, a part of the, the action is going to places. And, and so it sounds like sightseeing. It's still under the umbrella of the entertainment transportation. 677, yes, sir. Now, the other question I would ask is... Uh, Henry, you were talking about maybe stopping and letting people get off. Um, that may be another aspect of our sightseeing entertainment transportation vehicles. Were you envisioning serving any beverages or food? I honestly wasn't really eliminating or thinking about that. I just was thinking about more of something different I can bring. So but I... You, you heard that if it's a sightseeing entertainment transportation vehicle, you cannot have alcoholic beverages. Yes, and... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, under the category that you requested or permit for, Basically, your vehicle is um, a glorified taxi cab, really. Okay, yeah. You could pick people up, take them somewhere, drop them off, and that's it. We would have a specific pick-up and drop-off location with a curated route that they would pick. Right, but, uh, but what, what I'm saying is the category that you applied in it's kind of very vanilla in that there is no of these extra add-ons that can be done during your ride to fall within that category. Okay. You, you can pick them up, you can drop them off. So, is, is, that, is that about? I mean, yeah. Like, um, if, if what you're paying for is just a transportation to these places, um, that's one thing. But if what you're paying for is also, you know, the curation and maybe, Pick you know, route. someone on board providing knowledge about these destinations and, you know, helping the customer um, figure out what would be most entertaining to them. Um, I agree that seems to go a, a little over the line of just providing transportation. And I assume that they would charge a little additional for those additional services as well. Clarify. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. So are we ready for a motion on center stage transportation doing business as Music City Pink Express as application as a special purpose vehicle based on what we've heard so far? Uh, for, in my anticipation, would be a motion to uh, deny it. I would like a motion to deny it under this category specifically uh, under the ruling that it does not meet the qualifications or does not meet what it is not in the qualifications because there actually is not a what it should be but what it should not. I'll second if I can make a comment because it's <clears throat> All right, any discussion? I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead, I, Mr. Rogers. I mean, it's not just that we know what it's not, we know what it is. I mean, there's another category, and that's where they should be. So, I, I, I it agree. can't be both. I agree, Mr. Rogers. I, I, I mean, Mr. Carr had mentioned, you know, is this a loophole? I don't, I don't think it's a loophole at all. I don't think that an ETV is a special purpose vehicle. Um, and so... The, the motion on the table is to deny the application 
for the other passenger vehicle for hire application by center stage as a special purpose um, uh, vehicle for hire is and there's a second so all those may, may I make one other comment just for the sure. record and based upon what Miss Henry's description of what she envisions using these vehicles for uh, I I believe the motion should carry I'll just I'll just add that I think that as our attorney let us know sort of about this sort of entertainment and social purpose it's not just about a party it's I mean entertainment encompasses Precisely. a fairly broad and social encompasses a very broad you're getting a group taking them on a curated route I think it just doesn't it does meet not meet the standard of special um, vehicle but rather entertainment all right any further discussion all those in favor Aye. 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 Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, with respect to the application for uh, 615 transportation, Ms. Pistola is not present. Uh, I spoke with her <clears throat> through emails today. Uh, she indicated that she was, uh, wasn't was told to be here. Staff has indicated they did tell her to be here. I did not tell her. I didn't speak with her regarding until today. I reminded her the meeting was moved to 1230 because we, wanted, because we do have a new time that we're now meeting. Uh, I... I told her I would explain to the commission that she she didn't specifically ask for a deferral. I said we may be able to defer it. I also told her that the commission has the authority to defer or not defer. Uh, you're not required on any of your application to be present unless the commission says be present. And uh, we, as a staff, we all, when we know it's controversial, we try to make sure or not controversial. If we know there are going to be <laughs> questions, yeah. if we know it is que questions and discussions, I do not want the commission to never have, I, I want you to always have the uh, facts and figures in front of you in order to make a decision, which is what uh, makes you a very uh, good commission. So, uh, Ms. Costonis asked the question, are you planning to take action on 615 or would you like, I mean on, uh, yeah, on 615? Well, let me just put this out there to the commission for consideration. Um, if we do want to consider uh, the 615 transportation by Ms. Pizzatola, then I would ask that we not uh, consider the fact that she is not here in, um, we do have a full application. Uh, it is apparent from Mr. Fields that Ms. Pizzatola did not understand that she needed to be here, but then had further discussion with Mr. Fields and that, um, that, that um, you know, that Mr. Fields indicated to her, we may consider the application, we may defer it. But, but I feel given our, our um, earlier discussions with regard to center stage transportation's application, we may want to go ahead and consider 615's transportation its application. Considering it for deferment? Is that the consideration? No, cons considering on the merits of the application. Well, I would add that when I heard Ms. Henry's description of what she envisioned using her vehicles for, it was very clear that the application for a special purpose vehicle should be denied. She can apply later for the entertainment transportation vehicle as a sightseeing vehicle. Um, and looking at the application that's been provided by 615 Transportation, I don't see much difference between the two applications. So I guess those are just my observations, not necessarily leaning one way or the other. I think on this front, much like my questions to Ms. Henry with respect to, um, you see, Pink Express, kind of hearing from the horse's mouth what they intend to do, um, though it does seem apparently um, apparent to me as well that it's going to be a difficult road to hoe to kind of get to where it would not be an, an ETV, but nonetheless, um, I'm, you know, uh, I can have some pause and, and just kind of summarily um, not allowing them to explain what distinction that they would make because I feel like uh, once, uh, once that explanation is given, uh, it, it's pretty clear to the commission one way or another uh, and for the record as well. Um, um, I know our time is precious, but um, 
that's kind of my thought on that. From a, from a procedural standpoint, again, I, I'm not the lawyer here and don't claim to be. I, I, I hear Mr. Relliford. I, I would like for Ms. Pizzatola to be able to explain. I would also like the commission to uh, order my staff and me to not take any more special purpose vehicle applications <laughs> until such time you say take them. So from and a I, deferral standpoint, I believe she expects a deferral. I did not indicate you would give her one. By the same token, uh, I think that would be from a, from a uh, fairness standpoint. I think what it does, it puts you in a place to where you, you, we put her, it's not a public hearing, we bring in February, she tells, and she may have a completely different story. I just don't have an answer for that. I know about the vehicles. I know what they have been. I know that if, I mean, I'll just be, just knowing what I think about the ordinance today, I look at that and I think the back's gonna have to be enclosed with glass. Mm -hmm. This is, if, if it's gonna be an OPVH, it's gonna have to meet OPVH. And that, it, there's, the word plastic does not appear in 6.74. And these are the same vehicles that we parked as disciplinary action against as Ms. I, I, I don't as well. know that they these specific <clears throat> vehicles. What I can say is these vehicles were at least under the ownership of a company that you took disciplinary action against. Okay. And if I might point out something, you might suggest to her that she watch this video and figure out which way the wind's blowing. I will advise her of your actions today. Why, well, Rutherford? Would, would you like to make a motion to defer? Uh, I make the motion to defer um, consideration of the 615 transportation application until such time as uh, the applicant can present their um, proof as to why they fall into the special purpose category. So to the February meeting? Yes, to the February meeting. I second that. No, you're good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Can I make a recommendation? For the commission to consider and that is that we recommend to the metro council to add under the under six seven four zero two five that special purpose vehicles that they exclude the entertainment transportation vehicles under the definition of a special purpose vehicle and i would even go so uh, that's one recommendation i don't know if we need a motion on that or not but uh, mm -hmm. we do okay i make a motion that we recommend to the metro council to include under 674025 definition special purpose vehicle to exclude entertainment transportation vehicles. I second that motion. Could I, could I just ask something else? Do we really need a category of special purpose vehicle if there's never been one? Up in <laughs> staff opinion, the old guy's opinion. When 674 was written in 2010, there was not an anticipation of entertainment transportation vehicles. So my guess, just again, based on what I believe to be true, they would give this, what the, purpose, the special purpose of people was to give this commission some flexibility to allow uh, businesses to exist. Uh, when pedal carriages came in and the others, there was actually, they said, well, they can be under special purpose vehicles, OPVH, and we, uh, very quickly said, no, you're a bicycle. And it can't be an OPVH. So that's the reason that uh, that particular session came forward. So, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think the direct answer, and y'all know I go around the bush, is that you don't need a special purpose vehicle category. And, and it may be as appropriate to ask the council to remove this section. Uh, and, and again, it's go, it won't go into effect. It, 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 wouldn't, it, it wouldn't affect your actions now it would in fact for, from point forward at the commission and if you order me and i think you've got the authority in fact legal actually described to him that i have the authority i don't intend to take any more special purpose applications i would I, if i could just um i guess on on a business aspect and having to in in, in my business having to repurpose vehicles rather than to waste them and that these are expensive vehicles and I can see the need for the special uh, category in that it is a lot less costly to repurpose this vehicle than to rebuy it to actually have it manufactured to to fit that category versus then to enclose this all in glass 
and it fit the special purposes category. What, what I would add to that is I would like the special purposes category to be specific as, in, as to what it is versus to what it is not. To add some specifics that, that the special needs category has to be A, B, and C. Not, it cannot be A, B, and C. Because this, this to, to me, from a business standpoint, from an, an economic standpoint, for, from, a, from the possibility of a business standpoint, it is, it is you know, a, a 30% override to make that meet that category than 100% cost to build one in the category. And so what do you do with this? Because, uh, you know, there, there really is not too much wiggle room in the EV category as we are at our limits to just, what do you, demolish it? I, I just, as, as a cost standpoint, from a business aspect, I would not want to see that closed off. But we don't know what we're closing off. If it's just, it's not every, something else, what is it? And that's I why mean, I that's, said I, to make it specific. We should, we should ask to make it very specific you, as to but what that's, it is. What is that? I mean, you, seriously. You I mean. have, we have a recommendation to council and what we're going to do is send them an official communication. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you, what you're recommending is that, that you add a section that says, make sure it's not an ET. Uh, the other side of that is, if you would like to define special purpose, as long as it's not contrary to anything that's already in 674, under your rulemaking authority, you can do that. Now, the one thing I would tell you from a staff standpoint, we're going to need some time because we are, we are on March the 13th, we take any applications for all the ETs that are there. So from a staffing standpoint, we are, uh, we're certainly be using our policy team and that sort of thing. But uh, it, it's not, it would not be something we're going to be able to come back with in, six or, in a month. You know, maybe it's two months, maybe it's three months. I, I can't answer that because the part of the problem is we, there's not a model for this other places that I'm aware of. But we, we certainly, based on your conversations, we have some ideas maybe. So uh, if you want to do rulemaking, you can do that at any point. And you don't even have to take any action on that well. today subject to notice in the public Correct, correct. Uh, another following. So in other words, if you want to do rulemaking whatever month, we'll, we'll do public notice. People can be able to speak. And then you can make what rules that it was before you, just like you did last uh, June the 23rd and June the, uh, the 29th. Uh, so for 22 hours total. Uh, you certainly have that authority, and right? So. Uh, and I think my purpose was just not to throw the baby out with bathwater, so to speak and just to take it off the table before we've looked into it, before we have seen what we can do to, to maybe make this, this category more specific and, uh, you know, more friendly, so to speak, to the public and, the, and, and those who are seeking the business opportunity versus just to say, uh, we don't need it anymore. Mr. McNally has a, a motion mm -hmm. on the table. To that, um, based especially based on what Ms. Castonis has reminded us on our ability to interpret our rules um, and also pass rules as long as they're not contradictory to what Metro Council has legislated, and um, I think what we're what we're seems to be that we're deciding as a commission today is, you know, factually um, to us a. ETV is not a special purpose vehicle. Uh, and I think we can make that interpretation of our rule, even though 674.025 doesn't say it's not an ETV. I mean, it, and um, Mr. McNally's motion is to have Metro Council make that explicit change in, in the rules. And I think that's a, a good motion, but I, I don't think that prevents us from interpreting that an ETV is not a special purpose vehicle. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I think, you know, basically in listening to this, you know, uh, Commissioner McNally's um, motion to have the council, you know, update that regulation, I think it's well taken. I think it'll provide significant clarity. Um, I do agree with Commissioner Carr that I don't want to foreclose the entire category. 
you know, if y'all indulge me for 20 seconds, I can envision, you know, maybe you have a Comic-Con convention that goes to the Music City Center <clears throat> and somebody has a Batmobile and somebody wants to ride in the Batmobile, um, <laughs> you know, and, and the Joker got away, query whether it'd be entertainment or not, but, you know, that wouldn't necessarily be, you know, a normal, typical taxi cab shuttle, livery, or ETV. Um, to your tank reference earlier, not sure we want tanks on the road, but, you know, if somebody paints that tank red and, you know, there's some type of military parade or something going on, I'm not so sure. But, um, you know, the list, while making it more specific, we can give some non-exhaustive examples that um, may provide some clarity there that open that category up for business owners who may want to um, to to to, um, to profit off that. So, and I do agree. And just for past reference, MCAC used to be held in Nashville at the Renaissance. Uh, so a lot of Comic Con type things going on. My kids attend that. So yeah. And I would point out that I think we already have, in a sense, interpreted our interpreted special purpose vehicles to exclude ETVs because we examined 615's application and uh, and made a ruling today. So Six center stages. I'm sorry, center stages uh, ruling today and made a decision. So I, from what I'm hearing from Mr. Fields at this time is that I have a motion on the table regarding what we recommend to the council to, to clarify their rule or to add to their rule, but that at some point perhaps Mr. Fields and staff can come to us with some ideas about rulemaking for SPVs, and then we can schedule it for a public hearing and really iron this out um, with input from everyone. But I'm really glad that we had an opportunity today when we didn't have a really long agenda to have this discussion. It's Amen. been beneficial for me. <laughs> Could I ask a question? If the council decides just to get rid of that category, is that part of your motion? Is that part of what they could consider? No, my only motion is to uh, to add in 67025 that special purpose vehicles excludes the okay. entertainment transportation vehicles just to keep it real simple and clear today. Well, you need to do that with council, yes, but I'm not sure if my council person asked me, I wouldn't tell her just to eliminate <laughs> a category. Think about it. No one's ever asked for it before until we turned down some of those entertainment vehicles. So if it was a category that some business was going to use, where have they been? So, but that's just an observation. Yeah, but you, you have to take all to also have to take into account that we were never at a point to limit the ETV category before that as well. So there was never a need uh, to even put it to even you know dive that deep in the hole. You know, we it was bring one you can do it you know uh until we you know until we start started to limit and and actually separate those categories then they started to explore well well what else is within our reach so i, I don't think there uh, I, I think it wasn't used before <clears throat> because there uh there wasn't the etv regulation or any of the other regulations before it and that tells you something right there, that there was no public demand for it. I mean, if somebody wants to rent a limo, they can. And but <laughs> apparently until there were ETVs, no, I mean, and I'm not sure anybody wants to rent these things because I'm still not sure what they are. So I understand what you're saying, but I just disagree that you know, there's such a thing out there. Well, if, if, if I can, I'd like to second your motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Should we, for record, by the way, uh, put it before you not, are you just not going to do it on your own, yep. or do we need to put it in the record for you not to accept anymore until said time that we've determined that we're, we're open to reviewing it? I think that wouldn't hurt. Um, you, you do have to be kind of careful. Um, Someone might interpret this as a moratorium. We've kind of gone down that path before and had that discussion before. And um, I think you have to have like um, a reason for it and um, a clear timeline ending in mind. 
and the reason for it might be that you want to allow council to take action and um, allow staff to assist you with your desire to do some room making um, and like your timeline might be you know three months or something like that and, and uh, Ms. Ms. Costellos makes a good point what we would do is is uh, of course run it through as a part of NDOT, we have to operate through our operation, but we'll certainly take your recommendation to the council. Uh, staff will begin uh, looking at, as quickly as we can. Uh, a normal council action, uh, I mean, it will take a little while on the council action. It will also then take time for us to study and come back. Uh, if it's three months or six months, you know, if it's four months, two months. I, you know, it's, I, I, so I would say, if you would like to have a report back by when you look at your calendar, you're uh, you're going to be horse doing horse drawn carriages next month. If there are any, if, and we have no application, we I'm, do. I'm thinking April. Me. April, April is the next big meeting. We we have several layers of renewals that staff will be working on. If there are any issues, we'll bring those. But April is your next really big issue. No, the deadline for ET applications is March the 13th at noon. Then your meeting on April the 26th or so 7th. June, July, August. Yeah. Which one's a really light meeting? Uh, May you'll be considering your SUMD. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you'll be doing your SUMD uh, contract uh, consideration for renewal. June, you'll be considering anybody who's applied for a merge to operate an emergency record zone. So July would be the next mm -hmm. meeting month with, where there is nothing. I would also anticipate maybe a public hearing related to taxi cab fees in August prior to when they're due. Maybe again, that's that again is a discussion that that we're not prepared to share today because we have some study to do that as well. Okay, if I may make a motion that that we. Uh, temporarily suspend accepting applications for special purpose vehicles at the office um, pending Metro Council's action on our recommendation to exclude ETVs from the special purpose vehicles definition and to provide the staff opportunity to come to us with recommendations of what special purpose vehicles uh, with the criteria for special purpose vehicles and for us to have a, uh, a rule a rule, an open meeting rule hearing in July. I second. Any further discussion? That was a mouthful. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Any other business, Mr. Fields? I would share with you your staff that is back at the office monitoring your mo your actions reports. There, are, Miss uh, Amanda Mullins reports there are 522 OPVH vehicles uh, going into this meeting. Wow. So, so thank you, Amanda. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what's the size of the staff now? Because I know we have at least. There, Two here. There are there are four of us in the okay. office, and yeah. we have five inspectors. So nine people now. We're, we're up to nine people. We've gone from our legendary four. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. I believe there's more in way of uh, Cody Osborne, who uh, has uh, is our uh, mentor and supervisor, has has certainly been very helpful to us. Helpful. He's shaking <laughs> to uh, help us move forward in terms of staffing. Uh, we uh, have, uh, we, we do, historically we'd had two inspectors and now we're in five slots. We have three current and we're, we're about to hire the other two. There's also a relationship that, that works with our staff and that would have been historically the traffic and parking staff that would deal uh, with meters and, and loading and unloading. We're working up uh, putting together, it's being, it's together where there'll actually be cross training where your stay, you'll have more people available to bring more resources to bear, not only on issues related to traffic and parking, but also on transportation licensing. Uh, that also fits with the new uh, meter program that will have some additional enforcement. Uh, so you're, we've made tremendous strides in the last two years uh, moving forward uh, maybe three years moving forward on being able to enforce the to properly monitor regulate and enforce the ordinances established by the council which are nine and you have nine ordinances you're responsible for and and that is a lot for 
uh, a nine-person commission and a, uh, and a staff. But uh, since our joining with NDOT uh, Public Works previously, uh, we're able to leverage additional support and staff to get done what needs to get done. So we certainly are thankful for the support as well as our partners at the police department and all the others. So, I mean, it's, it, we, we're, we're moving forward. Sometimes seems slow and sometimes frustrating, but I feel I can report that your staff is working hard, all of its partners are working hard, and I, I report to the world that chem, your, this commission is working hard. Is your, like an ocean 11 setup. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> is your office still off Trinity Lane? No, our, we're now at 720 <laughs> South 5th Street. You're certainly okay. welcome. We're in the former engineering building that was Public Works. Now in Dutch, y'all are welcome to come by and visit. Uh, we'll have coffee uh, and, uh, and visit. Will do. If I could ask a question uh, sort of off on the subject, uh, I follow traffic and parking, I'm a strange person. Uh, so I saw <laughs> some of the discussion about the whole uh, parking meter thing, except that we're going away from parking meters. Where, where is the study about all of that, the downtown connect thing that was supposed to include they all are, of that? I think I can speak, they're, in the, they're, in the fi they're headed toward the final stages of it. Uh, Ms. Uh, Alarcon could not be present today, but I think they are, they're certainly working to uh, uh, get uh, they, what she, I think she's trying to do. It, well, I know what they're trying to do is get it done uh, this quarter. So uh, I believe that's where we're headed, and uh, we, we're certainly going to, we're hoping that's going to inform a lot of your decisions as well as traffic and parking decisions. Right. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.